you want to see me making firewood, you have come to the right place. I got a firewood processor and I got fans. Good heavens, is it hot. Guys, this is not, I didn't sign up for this heat when I got into firewood. This heat, <laughs> we're talking 90 degrees, high humidity. It is not healthy to be making firewood. You know how hot it is? This morning, this morning, I saw the Roadrunner being chased by the coyote and they were both walking. And this is how hot it's been, guys. You know, I cut my logs uh, that are too big to go through the Yapa. I'll buck them and I set them over here to run through the axis. <laughs> I'm not touching these. It is just too hot. And this is uh, you know, this is a lot of wood here. I, I still got to get it split, but this is just going to have to wait for a day when it cools off. These are some big logs that I brought over with the Bobcat, and these are set to be bucked, and I'll, I'll get these run through the axis as well, but uh, it's just gonna have to wait, guys. It is so hot, you can wash and dry your clothes at the same time. It is so hot. I bought a loaf of bread at the grocery store, and by the time I got home, it was toast. It is so hot, my thermometer has taken the day off. It is so hot, I saw a chicken lay an omelet. It is so hot, I saw two fire hydrants fighting over a dog. It is so hot that artificial flowers are dying. It is so hot, even the polar bears are wearing sunscreen. Yeah, this has been a tough week, guys. I'm serious. We have had nothing going on, no production. I did make two deliveries, but man, they were tough. I had stacked a half a cord of uh, hardwoods, and <laughs> I, was, I was getting dizzy during it. It is hot. So I think there is, you know, you want to be productive, but you got to be real. Uh, when you start getting older, what I've learned, you know, the heat, it's hard on you. When I was younger, I felt I was impervious to heat, uh, but I, I'm not that way anymore. This is tough, but we can still do some things. So for right now, I'm up. It is early morning. The sun is still low. And again, it's supposed to be super, super hot. Oh, and I have one of my high school kids uh, stacking a cord of firewood uh, out in the drying yard uh, too. So you might be hearing some banging around going on there. But here's what we're gonna do today. The Yapa needs uh, some adjustments. And the more I get to know the Yapa, the more I like it. And you know, it's just like any other machine. It, you gotta show some care to it. You gotta um, make some adjustments. And I will show you what we got going on with that. All right, come this way. If you're new to the channel, this is the Yappa 365 Pro. I am into my, I guess my second year with this. It has been a great machine, man. It has put our production on a whole new level. But you still have to do some adjusting to it. Uh, let me just give you a quick overview of how this works. The log's gonna come down the end feed, and this is a spring-loaded um, hold down. And if you look, the table is on an angle and this pushes the log into the angle, and then when the saw comes down to cut it, you know, it, it, it's squeezing everything into this. Um, it just makes the machine faster because you're not having to release the hold down. The log just slides right through it. It's all hydraulically controlled, so this makes the, the saw cut. Uh, this pushes the saw back up and engages the splitter, and then you can in-feed your next log. What is really slick about this machine, it reminds me of, you know, the old days of the 350 Chevy. I mean, there's everything is adjustable on this, and I mean everything. You can adjust how far the ram comes out, how fast it retracts, uh, how fast the bar comes down. Um, you can adjust the length of your log. You can adjust the speed of the infeed. Everything is adjustable on this. And what I had found though is with these adjustments, you gotta stay on them. So here is an adjustment that I need to make on my machine. And I wanted to show you guys because I have to lift the hood and then I can show you what's underneath. I think it's really cool. It's really neat engineering. The problem I'm trying to fix today is when I am done cutting and I push up, the chain is supposed to quit spinning. Uh, but it, it's it's continuing to spin and that is an adjustment that I can that I can make So I'm going to show you how we make it and then I thought I could um, you know Just do some cleaning up around this machine and show you how it works I'm just going to start this up and idle it and show you uh, what it's doing I 
have the machine on idle right now and I'm going to show you what happens when I close the hood. Remember, when you raise the hood, it kills the hydraulics. When you shut it, it, it engages them again. But watch the chain here. Alright, that of course is bad because I'm wasting oil. I'm going to you know, heat up the chain in the bar. And, but this is a real simple adjustment to make. All right, let me uh, show you where it's at. This is the adjustment right here, guys. Uh, this is a, uh, almost like a carriage bolt and it pushes down on this valve. So when the bar and chain are working up and down, uh, this is pushing on the valve. I need to lengthen this bolt and it's going to uh, make sure it cuts the hydraulics off. I'm going to just manually work the bar up and down and I'm going to show you how this valve works. This is the bar coming down guys and you see that it opens up the valve and it allows the hydraulic fluid to flow through the motor and then when the saw comes back up it pushes in the valve and it cuts the hydraulic flow off. So that bolt has to be made longer so that it um, shuts the valve off. The adjustment is made on the back side, but I thought since we're getting into it this far, I'm going to go ahead and raise the hood. We're going to just do some cleaning up. I'll show you how this thing works under the hood. There are just two bolts to raise the hood on this. Next thing, you lift the out feed and it is secured with this pin. And this will be the pin that holds the hood open. I'm going to lift the hood and shove this pin in. And this thing is heavy, guys. When you watch this machine on uh, YouTube, it looks like it's built light, you know, a lot of sheet metal, but it is heavy, guys. And this table is, weighs a ton. And it is secured with this pin. There we go. Here is the way it looks under the hood, guys. And the valve that we're going to be adjusting, this is on the other side of it. It's on the end of this arm. Let me show you how this works. Here is the valve to um, cut off the flow to the hydraulic motor. So the saw, the saw motor is on this shaft. And the shaft is held with these that bearing and this bearing and uh, there you can see that's the carriage bolt that we're going to be adjusting to make it longer and it's pushing into it's pushing into that carriage bolt right there so here you can see the bar is now coming up and then it pushes on that bolt and it's just not pushing it in far enough so I need to adjust this to make it uh, work a little bit better. I hope that made sense. So this is the ram and this is the whole mechanism here. This is the splitter valve and this is now engaged when the ram gets to its uh, full length the splitter valve is turned off. All right. So I thought I would just show you how the underside of this thing looks. I'm not an expert at it, but I think it is nice to look at. I closed the table. I'm going to start the engine up now, and you're going to see the saw running. We're going to make this adjustment together, and I'm going to show you how this thing works. Here we go. Let's start this thing up. Again, guys, let's see the condition that we're trying to fix. When I shut the hood, this saw is not supposed to run. It's only supposed to run when I uh, pull down on the lever. All right, so this saw is running, and that's not... So you see when it goes back to idle, it's still spinning. So come on around here, and I'm going to show you how we adjust this. I'm going to loosen up this jam nut so I can uh, lengthen the, uh, the carriage bolt. So when I start turning this, this is going to make the saw quit running. So there, the saw just shut off.
all I have to do now, guys, is tighten up this jam nut and we are good. So I'm gonna hold the bottom with a pair of pliers and we are good to go. Let's go around the front and see how it works. Here you go, the engine's running, the saw is not uh, spinning at idle. And we have fixed it. It works the way it's supposed to. It's safe now and I can get ready to start making firewood when things cool off. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this and that you got to see some parts of this machine that you haven't seen before. If you are digging this, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps. And you know, don't forget to subscribe. We post videos every Wednesday and Sunday. I hope that everyone has a great day.